How much do you earn as a screenwriter? See, I find that everybody has a number and it's usually an exact number. So what is yours? More. I'm going to lift the lid on the four different categories of screenwriters, the four classes of different screenwriters and what they earn, their income brackets. Screenwriting money, let's get stuck in. It's all about bucks, kid. The rest is conversation. When I was an aspiring writer and I dreamt of breaking into Hollywood, I thought it was binary. That once you signed with a Hollywood agent or manager and took meetings and sold scripts, that you would earn Hollywood money. I dreamt of the Malibu mansion. It wasn't very honorable, but that's what I had my eyes focused on. But the reality is that the people with the Malibu money are the aristocracy. They're the first class of screenwriter. They're the A-list. We're talking about the Ted Elliott's, the Terry Rossios, the Craig Mazins, the John August. These guys are earning between 650 and way into the millions. To give you an idea of how much an A-list screenwriter earns, they can earn up to $200,000 a week on a production rewrite. And a lot of the work that they do is uncredited. It's helping guide movies to production. But the fact is that most screenwriters will not become A-list writers. I mean, we're talking about the 0.1%. The second class is the middle class, and they can expect to earn between 150 and maybe 650 a year. And this used to be a sizable number of the community. There were writers who would sell a pitch to a studio, get paid 200 grand to write it, and if it got made, they get 650, but more often, these films wouldn't get made, but they could still get two or three commissions a year and earn a very nice salary. Well, since the strike of 2008, the business has massively changed. The studios have stopped making these middle budget, high quality movies, or even mid budget action movies. They don't make them anymore. And because of this, the middle class of Hollywood, the Middle East, has been ripped asunder. A lot of people who are in the Middle East have moved down the leagues or got out of the business completely. The third class of screenwriter is the blue collar screenwriter, the working class writer. And that's 150 down to probably $1,000 a year. If you break into the industry, chances are you will be a blue collar working class writer. And even if you've been doing it 10 years, you're probably going to be a blue collar working class writer. Now you might say, well, hold on, whenever I'm on a forum and I ask like a pro screenwriter or an agent, what can you hope to earn? They say that the Writers Guild minimum is $139,000 for a movie that costs over $5 million. So how come so many people are earning less? And the reality is if you're a blue collar working class writer, you're surviving on options and the odd rewrite which is not $139,000. It might be $30,000 here, it might be $10,000 here. And the other thing to bear in mind is that a lot of writers are not in the WGA. I gave up my job at the Financial Times, 31st of December, 1996, and I've been writing professionally ever since. I wrote for 12 years before I got my WGA card and became a member of the Writers Guild of America. Ironically, some of my biggest years were before I became a WGA writer, but we'll get into that. We have the A-list aristocracy. We have the ever decreasing battered middle classes. We have this large chunk, relatively speaking, of the blue collar working class writers. And then unfortunately there is a fourth class of writer, professional writer. I'm not talking about aspiring writers. I'm talking about people who have broken in. These are the writers who don't earn anything and can't afford to put the shirt on their back from their screenwriting income because there's no income. Who's that? Who's that? What you want? We've had some complaints about con men pretending to be blind and uh, crippled. I can see! I can see! I have left! And that can often be writers who are broken in, they've got a decent agent, they're taking all these meetings and they can't figure out, well, when's the money coming? I'm not a charity. How do I make a living out of this? And this can be a long and frustrating period where you're kind of in purgatory. You're not quite there. You've got the ear of the town, but not the wallet of the town. That's one category of no collar pro writer. 
and the other category is the middle class writer or the working class writer who has dropped down the leagues and is no longer earning. And to give you a cautionary tale, in three years, I was a member of three of these classes. My former writing partner and I, we had our best year in the mid 2000s. And that was before we were WGA and that was in the UK. And I can tell you, I mean, we have to be honest about this stuff. So I'm gonna tell you, we earned $300,000 from a couple of very useful commissions. And then, our UK agents got us into America. We signed one of the big agencies. Everyone was telling us that we had the potential to be earning seven figures a year. I smoked a lot of this stuff. I, I sniffed it and I thought, well, listen, if this is 300, this is just the beginning. Next year is going to be half a million or more. So my wife at the time and I had been driving around in some pretty battered up cars. And I thought, well, listen, let's get some decent cars for the family. So I went out and bought two Audis. <laughs> My co-writer, Matt, who's the sensible one, there's a pattern here, actually. He's always been the sensible one. And, you know, Matty, respect. He put a deposit down on a house at the time when houses weren't as expensive as they are now. Now, guess whose asset is worth more? Matt's house or the two Audis that are now in a scrapyard somewhere being used for spare parts? <laughs> Uh, sir, he drove off the roof. What? He drove off the roof. Looking back now, I was younger. Well, you're walking around blind without a cane, pal. A fool and his money are lucky enough to get together in the first place. I had false expectations of what I could earn as a Hollywood writer, and I just believed that now I was with a big agency and people were talking big numbers and I was having big meetings that, of course, I could buy a couple of Audis, and that was a massive mistake. Um, yeah, I screwed up. The next year, when we had broken into Hollywood, we earned each $20,000. So we went from $300,000 as middle list writers to $20,000 each as blue collar writers. And I couldn't get it. I didn't understand how I was in the game and yet I was earning less than when I was out of the game in the UK. Third year, certainly for me, after all my expenses, $0,000. You know, taking all these trips when I went to LA, four grand a time, hotels, going out there is expensive. I didn't clear a profit on that third year and I became a no-collar professional working writer. When you're thinking about breaking into this industry, realize that your income can fluctuate madly. You know, it's like any investment. It's like the little small print they put on those investment documents. Income can go up as well as down and current earnings are no guide to future earnings. Don't believe that when you finally sign with a top agency that the money's gonna roll in because it, it may do and I hope it does. And I hope it's different for you than it was for me initially. Um, things got better afterwards. But, you know, the two things you need is you need a war chest if you're gonna give up your job. You need a war chest or a long line of credit or the bank of mum and dad. Either one of those three things to sustain you. And if you're in a relationship, you're putting their security on the line too. And if you go a year without earning any money, it's gonna have, an, you know, it's gonna have a bad effect on the people that that count the people who care for you. I would advise everybody now going into the game to make sure you've got a side hustle, to make sure even when you break in that you do not say, right, that's it, I'm never doing that anymore. You can have a job in the creative industries, whether it's doing corporate videos or filmmaking or copywriting or something that is tangential to writing. So you're still using the same muscles you're gonna be using for screenwriting, but that equally you're not entirely reliant on screenwriting for your income because there will be some years minimum where it all goes tits up and it's not great. That would be my advice to you. I'm gonna go deeper than this. This is just the first video on screenwriting money. I am gonna do a video on contracts, what the terms mean, and I'm gonna share my figures with you. This painting here, I bought it 10 years ago for $60,000. I could sell it today for 600. The illusion? has become real. And the more real it becomes, the more desperate they want it. I'd say the two takeaways are this. Don't dream of Malibu money and don't buy any Audis. This is your wake up call, pal. Go to work.